wheat has about three times as much primary energy consumption and also about 11 times as much greenhouse gas emissions from it. And the third material for metal, as you can see, is also a very complex um, uh, process. And so the energy involved in it is also a lot. Um, for one kilogram of metal uh, process, it takes about 100 uh, megajoules of energy. And so the question is, how should we compare summary measures from different buildings? And uh, let's take a look. Um, so on this graph, we have buildings lined up from increasing copy quantity. And on, and on the orange line, we can see that this is the line for the primary energy consumption. And it appears that the more concrete in the building, the more uh, primary energy you use. And this next slide is in terms of wood. And as you can see, um, the primary energy consumption of using more wood is less than using concrete. And the trend is, uh, looks like it's decreasing. And finally, we have metal. And this is the primary energy consumption from uh, increasing metal use in our buildings. And the more um, metal is in the building, the higher the energy consumption. And next, we can see the global warming performing potential for uh, increasing concrete per square foot. And once again, with an increasing trend, and next we have wood, uh, which looks like it's decreasing. Uh, the global warming potential is uh, less than concrete. And this one we have for metal. And increasing metal per uh, square foot, it appears it is increasing as well. And so um, here is the construction material stock at UBC. And as you can see, most of our materials that we use is concrete, and next would be masonry and rock, uh, block and bricks. Uh, here's a pie chart of it. Uh, so, um, as you can see from this graph, uh, we were using a lot of concrete in UBC buildings, but in recent years we have decreased in using concrete. And so, uh, functional units. Um, we categorize buildings by their functional units, and we uh, classify, uh, categorize them in terms of classrooms, research labs, uh, and offices, and study areas, theaters. But the challenges with uh, defining functional area uh, units is with occupancy, productive use, and number of floors and buildings. So, for example, if we have two equal area of classrooms, but one with more occupancy than the other, then clearly that one has a higher efficiency. And so let's take a look at the areas of um, academic buildings. So as you can see, 25% of um, area in buildings is in uh, stairwells, halls and atriums, next we have 18% of it uh, for mechanical rooms, and only 9% for classrooms. And here's another graph. Um, so this is to show the uh, number of uh, type of um, areas in buildings and with respect to the impacts of primary energy consumption. And it appears that we don't have a really uh, prominent trend in this. And this one is by classroom total area for global warming potential. Once again, um, we don't have a uh, particular trend for this. And this is offices per uh, total area. And so uh, next part, we'll be we talking about applications and recommendations. And I had the time to loop. Hi, my name is Luke. Uh, I'm just going to talk to you briefly, a little introduction about uh, appli uh, applications and recommendations. Um, we're, uh, uh, the database we're building, uh, okay, so in this part of the presentation, we're going to be examining the database we're building and its applications and examining the possible impacts of future building renovations. In addition, we will be discussing the effectiveness of current green building policies. Uh, we will also be offering some recommendations based on what we have researched and learned while doing our projects, ranging from examining manufacturing and construction components of the building to educating the public on the advantages of LCA. <coughs> so, what do all these numbers mean? Just looking at the numbers, it's impossible to tell uh, what they mean and what these potential effects May, might have. Having a database will allow us to understand and interpret the magnitude of these numbers 
A database puts all these numbers in perspective so we can interpret the data from a single building relative to another building. What it comes down to is there is no answer to the question, is a building green? There's only relative impacts. Over the past two years, uh, this class has modeled 29 buildings uh, across UBC and the relevant information has been stored in the database. For each building, we've included our on-screen takeoff models, our takeoff inputs and assumptions document, our and our impact estimator models. From these models, we have also stored results, which include the bill of materials, the room type of information, the life cycle impact profiles, which are outputted as resource and energy consumption, air, water, and land emissions. And finally, we have stored our life cycle impact assessment profiles, which are categorized into eight impact categories previously discussed. <coughs> With this database, we will be able to compare future buildings to current buildings in order to establish how future buildings are performing and understand where these impacts are coming from. In the future, we are looking to grow this database to all buildings in UBC and perhaps into residential and institutional buildings across Canada with the hope of one day developing a program which will use the information, assess, reduce, and certify green buildings across Canada. This class and the resultant database is a product of the Social, Ecological, Economic, and Development Studies Program, or SEEDS for short which is used across campus in developing environmentally friendly classes and initiatives. Uh, next, Adam will discuss the applications of LCA for building and renovation purposes. Hey, everybody. Um, so, renovation baselines. Retaining and renovating buildings intuitively may seem like a sustainable choice. Uh, but quantifying that data, quantifiable data is required to actually prove this. Uh, it can be hard to convince decision makers when their main concern is short term monetary costs. It can be especially hard to convince decision makers when renovations can be more costly than new construction. The provincial, minist uh, the provincial Ministry of Advanced Education has created guidelines to state if a renovation on UV costs more than 67% of what it costs for a new construction, then the renovation will not be approved. approved. Um, some initiatives created by UBC, such as Track 2010, UBC Renew, UBC Policy Number 5 for Sustainable Development, were created with the vision of sustainable development on the UBC campus. And uh, these guidelines are initiatives that hope to analyze other aspects of decisions related to environmental and social impacts. Using our LCA database, impacts associated with the construction materials of certain buildings at UBC are now known. If renovations are planned, these can be mod the renovations can be modeled similar to what we had done in our study and compared. Uh, the comparison <coughs> will allow for appropriate decisions to be made whether to renovate or to create entirely new structures. So, both materials from demolition and renovation go directly into the landfill. Uh, using our bill of materials created from our study, we'd be able to estimate exactly what's coming out of our buildings because we know basically what's in, in them. So, further research can be done on this subject uh, to better utilize demolition waste through reuse and recycle. Research could also be done to better preserve materials during the deconstruction phase so these could have uh, maximized use, maximized future use. Now I'm going to pass it off to Kip who's going to discuss the effectiveness of green buildings. The UBC Sustainability Office provides us with information, policies, and programs such as the Green Building Program and UBC Renew to ensure that UBC is able to achieve its aim of being one of the greenest campuses in Canada and worldwide. And now with the incorporation of LCA, we should be able to improve, improve on its green performance. Um, an example of how we can use our LCA to incorporate into previous studies is uh, looking at a study on greenhouse gas emissions. Currently, scope one and scope two, which are direct energy usage and electricity usage, are included in the UBC um, GHG inventory. As you can see in scope three, 
uh, buildings are completed, which before now there hasn't 